If you are interested in economics, but you're looking for a way to learn more, then check out this video because I have five books that will help you continue learning economics. My name is Craig and welcome to Market Power. We are looking at the power of markets and economics to shape our world. And economists really like to write books. Um, they're not on YouTube as much. So while I'm trying to create videos to help you learn economics, to become better at thinking like an economist, really right now the frontier like the place where you're gonna get the most of that is by reading good books but sometimes it can be hard to figure out which books you should read or even which books you'll be interested in especially at the beginning when you've just started learning economics when maybe you don't know what you're interested in so i've got five books that i really like i've tried to pick them from across the spectrum on topics that you might be interested in and they're gonna help you learn more about economics and just really see the world differently. The first book I'm gonna recommend really dives into this question of why don't a lot of people like economists? I don't know, maybe you're too much at the beginning of your economics education, wherever you are in life, you might just be learning about economics, but it's common thing for people to just not like economists. There's, I had one economics professor who said that across the disciplines, the one thing that everybody could agree on was at least we don't like the economists. And that, I think there's a reason for that. And that's what this book addresses. And this is actually the only book out of the five that I'm going to talk about today that I actually have with me. I've got other, <laughs> most of these I have in my office, but I can't even go out to my office. We're supposed to be staying home. So make sure you stay home. But here it is. It is Economics Rules by Danny Roderick. This is, I love the title because it's got that, that double entendre right there, right? economics rules right like that's one reason why you should be reading this book but another one is here are rules behind thinking about economics this book changed the way that i look at economic models and that's one of the reasons why so many people don't like economists is because of the way that we use models to approach problems we're much more like scientists or engineers when you think about it like that um, in that we have a set of models and we use these models to analyze the world. Now, Danny Roderick goes through here and he's writing this both for economists and non-economists to understand how we use these models the right way because there are wrong ways to use these models. And by reading this book, it really helped me disentangle what goes on in economics and how I should teach economics. I've done videos like this. So I did the video on raspberry shakes and whether that is a competitive market. And I tried to follow the recommendation right here on going through what's the setup, does it look like, which model does it match. So if you want an example of how I've applied what is in economics rules, check out my video on raspberry shakes and the market for raspberry shakes. My second book gets into economic history. Now I'm a little biased. My research and my teaching both center on economic history, but I think economic history is a fantastic way to keep learning economics. So a lot of people, they've never had an economics class before. Like if you're lucky in high school, you get maybe a semester of economics, maybe a full year, but really like that doesn't come until your senior year. Most of the time, not that many people get an economics education, but history on the other hand, man, you start taking history basically in kindergarten, right? Like you have Thanksgiving and they give you their nice little story about what happened at the first Thanksgiving. And you start learning about so many different aspects of history throughout your whole education. And never do you really get into the economics of it. Like a lot of history is the social history or wars or just trying to give you like those big headline events throughout history. But it turns out when you start looking at economics in history, that is when things start making sense. That's when you realize economics is like so useful. So my recommendation on a good economic history book is called Sharing the Prize. It's by Gavin Wright. This is about the economics of the civil rights movement. Now, there are a couple of reasons why this is a good book. One, it's pretty recent history, so you can relate to a couple of the things here. You might have a little more of a touch point. Sometimes it's hard when we're talking about colonial times or when we're talking about another country for you to land on those topics and understand and really connect with them. When you see the civil rights movement, that's that's not that long ago it's much easier to connect with it and sometimes the things are more profound when i read this book and saw that the things it's talking about go all the way into the early 90s that was something that just really 
change the way that I look at the civil rights movement, the way I look at history. So I think it's good for connecting to an event that hopefully you've been exposed to, but you might not know as much about. Another reason why this is a really good book is because it does, it, it's very accessible to intro economics. Like there's not super complex estimations, like they do a little, he does some data collection and shows you the trends in the data, but it's not something that you're gonna hit this thing and just be overwhelmed and not understand what's going on. So I recommend Sharing the Prize by Gavin Wright. This is one that just profoundly affected me when I read it. Uh, shortly after it came out, I was in graduate school and it, this really changed the way I looked at economic history. I should do more, I should talk more about economic history. I have a whole philosophy, I've got just like lots of thoughts on economic history. So if you are interested in what my thoughts on economic history or more videos about economic history, let me know in the comments below. But let me get to the next book. So the third book that I want to talk about deals with economic growth. And I think this is a concept that isn't really addressed neatly in like an intro economics class. Usually you have to get to an intermediate economics class and even then you might not be fully diving into everything you need to go for an understanding of economic growth and even what's happening with economic growth today. And so if you like that macroeconomic section of your intro economics class, then you should check out Fully Grown by Dietz Volrath. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm really sorry, Dietz. I know you're active on Twitter and on blogs and you might come across this video. I really apologize if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. But this is a really interesting book because it's going into what's happening with economic growth in the US today. And it does a really good job of breaking down what happens in growth. Like what are the things that contribute to growth? What have we seen change over the past couple of years that might be a contributor to the slowdown in economic growth? And his whole thesis is that the reason why economic growth has slowed down is because we're actually a much richer country and we have great options. This is reflecting the better options that we have today. And as a result, economic growth has slowed down. It's just one of those books that will change the way that you're looking at things. I guess I didn't mention it at the beginning. Like I'm going to put links to these books in the description below if you want to check them out. Um, you know, find them where you'll find them. But the next book that I want to talk about, this fourth one, it kind of connects to this fully grown book because instead of talking about economic growth, let's talk about poverty. Let's think about what's happening in the poorest countries in the world and like why? Why are these countries poor and how do people respond to that poverty? So the fourth book is one that I've recommended before. It is Poor Economics by Esther Duflo and Abhijit Banerjee. Now these two just won the Nobel Prize. I did a whole video on that. I did a couple videos on who they are and some of their research. This is a classic already. It's about, it's almost 10 years old now. Uh, maybe it's a little shy, maybe it's eight years old, but it is gonna be one of those classics that people turn to because they, Abhijit Banerjee and Esther Duflo, have really been at the frontier of trying to understand what goes on in the lives of people living in developing countries. And so they go through like health, they're going through schooling, they're going through political economy just trying to get an idea of what is life like in these developing countries. And not just that, like this is, this is really a book about microeconomics. So Fully Grown is macroeconomics, what happens on that big country scale. This, if you like that microeconomic section, you like how people make choices. You know, they have constraints. They're trying to decide where to go, what to do, how they're gonna live their lives. This book goes into that. And it's great because it's gonna help you understand the tools that economists are using to understand and test hypotheses. Fantastic book. It's going to stand the test of time. Really recommend reading this, especially if you're into microeconomics or development economics, or you just want to understand things like RCTs. So my fifth book is one that, again, has changed the way I look at the world. And let me introduce it by this little puzzle. Here are two houses. Uh, they have pretty much the same characteristics. They have the same number of bedrooms, you know, the same square footage, acreage. It's all like relatively the same. And yet the difference in prices is crazy. So what's going on here? Well, the difference in prices is because one of these houses is located in Utah, in Cache Valley, Utah, where I teach, and the other house is located in Silicon Valley, where the tech industry is. And so this puzzle is, why would you 
why are so many companies moving to Silicon Valley instead of Cash Valley, Utah, or other places in the country where the cost of living is so much cheaper? Why do they just inflict this pain upon themselves to go to such an expensive place? Well, this fifth book answers that question. The fifth book is called The New Geography of Jobs by Enrico Moretti. This book talks about the geography, the economic geography, like where certain things are, why people are located in different areas, and why industries cluster. Think about it, if you look at the tech industry, it's clustered in Silicon Valley. If you look at the entertainment uh, industry, it's clustered around LA, Hollywood area. Finance, clustered around New York. That doesn't mean that these are the only clusters, of course, right? There are tech clusters that pop up. Here in Utah, we have a burgeoning tech cluster. But it's interesting that we still see these clusters. Like, why aren't they just popping up all over the country? Well, the new geography of jobs talks about this. It talks about these agglomeration effects. It talks about these spillovers that we get from being located near other people working in the same industry as us. It's talking about thick labor markets and thin labor markets. These are really important concepts that help us understand how our economic geography is forming and the returns to education. It just goes through this is a really important book. I don't think it got that much attention when it came out, but it was one that the way that it changed, I can tell you how it's changed my mind, or at least changed the way that I look at the world. When I drive through small towns now, like when we're doing a cross country trip and we drive through a small town, I just look at that and think of this book every time and ask myself, what's going on in that small town? Like, what is it that people, why do people want to live there? What industry is driving that? town's economy. That's what comes to my mind every time now, and that is because of this book, The New Geography of Jobs. So this video is part of a series about learning economics and what goes into it. So if you are interested in that topic, go ahead and check out this playlist. And also let me know in the comments below if you have a recommendation on books that people can read to learn more about economics. We'll see you on next time in Market Power.